this is going to be something I'm sure uh, hopefully is going to help some people. You know, there's a fondness for certain colors uh, that when the public's buying dogs. Uh, Americans are particularly drawn to color. Almost any breed that gets popular, like boxers, that are normally a fawn dog or a brindle dog, some American breed are going to fool around and they're going to have a black boxer and a white boxer. Very popular. Black German Shepherd, white German Shepherd, right? And then you have the breeds that are naturally white, like the Dalmatian and the Doggo. Well, there's no such thing as genes all work together in concert. And some genes complement other genes. So when you're breeding for a color, you're going to get certain other characteristics, whether you want them or not, that's going to come with that color. Unfortunately, for Dalmatian owners, for instance, doggo owners, the white gene seems to piggyback on a gene that's defective for hearing. So in your white breeds, you have a, a, lot, of, a lot of deafness, okay? Now, I fooled for a while with Argentine doggos breeding them and ran across that problem. This is quite a while back when they first came into the country. In fact, I think there wasn't but two breeders maybe when I first got mine. Uh, it was White Satin and, and then uh, Richard Mullins out of New Mexico. So I tried to figure out, I got a couple of deaf dogs. And I didn't want to sell them because I didn't know what kind of home they'd end up having. I got, a, I got one or two pup. both of these cases were situations where we sold the pups, they realized something was not right with them, they checked them, their, dog, their vets brought them back, we gave them what they call a bear test, which is the one way you can tell if, scientifically if a dog's deaf, I'll show you another way to tell here in just a minute, but if they are deaf, I'm trying to figure out what can I do to make this deaf dog a working dog. Well, the biggest problem you got with a deaf dog is if they're back 15, 20 feet away and they don't hear you. They can't, you can't call them. If you can't get their attention by calling them, you can't get, you can't get anything out of them. Pardon the noise going by there, folks. So I'm gonna give you two little tips here. Here's the first one, in case you, are, you have or you know someone who has a deaf dog. Deaf dogs respond well to hand signals. Dogs respond better to hand signals and body language than they do to voice, actually. So you have no problems with, you have no problems with uh, deaf dogs if they, if they can look at you. So if you have a deaf puppy, first off, get a vibrating collar. Teach your dog, just like when we play the name game that you can see in our book, Lifestyle Dog Training, to teach you how to do that. Say, hit the buzzer, wave your treat, your vibrator, give your dog a treat. Hit the vibrator, give your dog a treat. Hit the vibrator, give your dog a treat. In a couple of four or five days, you're gonna hit that vibrator while she's standing back 20 yards and she's gonna look at you. As Soon as she looks at you, you can give her a hand signal. Front, heel, whatever, okay? So there's your first little trick in dealing with a deaf dog. Now I'm gonna tell you something, let me be really, really clear on this. I have no scientific studies, no medical evidence, no nothing to back me up. This is only things I have observed in my guard dog company and in working for the public when I was dealing with deaf doggos, Dalmatians for the public and other people. And that little secret right, everyone, is- Everyone, if you've watched any of my YouTube uh, training tip videos, you know I'm really partial to this Acme 535 silent whistle. I've been using these for decades. Uh, probably, probably the best tool I had in my guard dog business was this whistle. Sometimes you have incidences where the dogs would be on a really large site. We, we had a four or five acre spot for U.S. Customs uh, where they had confiscated drug lord, lord 
cars from El Paso and boats and all sorts of yachts. And one of the security systems they had were my guard dogs. Well, dogs could be at the back of the lot and somebody could be cutting the fence. And uh, of course, with their hearing, they'd hear it and they could come up there and they could, you know, they scared people off, but there's a hole there, the dog could go out and I'd lose a $1,000, $900 dog. That's why I started using these. Instead of driving around hoping I could find the dogs, I taught them all to come to this whistle. And I discovered that even in an urban situation with a lot of houses blocking, dogs could hear this three quarters of, of a mile or a mile away. So that's when I got really fond of it. And uh, then by accident, I had some one of my doggos that turned out she was deaf. And she was a really good one that I'd raised. And she was sleeping off in a corner one day when I was doing some training with one of her brothers, one of her siblings. And I knew she was deaf. And I blew the whistle to get her brother to come to me. And when I did, I noticed she perked up and looked at me. Well, wow, now this dog's deaf. And I'm gonna tell you how to do your own scientific bear test or your friends can do so you can tell if your dogs are deaf or not. This dog's deaf, but she responded. I went ahead and taught her to look at me by using this whistle. When it hits certain decibel levels, theories of mine only, not a fact. I wanna make really clear the no whistle company's ever said this, nobody else has ever said this. These are my personal experiences only. But I think what was funny was if you hit this whistle, I'm not gonna blow it with my microphone right here. I will. That's a lot louder noise. And you can't tell it, but Bart's over there minding his own business. But if I do that higher pitch, that's what, <laughs> good boy. That pitch is the one I use, good boy, Bart, to call all my dogs to front. That means come and sit in front of me. He was back there checking stuff out. You notice I didn't even have to say his name and he was deep in a sniff and he came and sat, okay? So it's really great. They can hear this a long way off. My personal experience, I, I would say up to a mile in an urban situation. What I found was if you go in the top three decibel levels, which are the quietest ones for us to hear, there are deaf dogs who maybe they're not completely deaf. Maybe they got a little bit of hearing. They can hear this whistle way better than they can hear a human voice. So what, what I did with, and I'd say I've probably dealt with two dozen deaf dogs in the last 15 years for friends, and I would say a third of them were able to hear this whistle set at a higher pitch. And what that allows you to do is have a backup to your hand signal. You hit the vibrate bus button on your vibrating collar, your dog looks at you, you blow this whistle, and they come right to you. So for everyone, if you know someone who's got that problem, you know, tell them about this, tell them about the collar, even better than that, tell them about this training video, tell them about the Thursday night podcast. I forgot we're gonna, we're gonna show everybody the secret weapon every dog handler has, and especially you ladies that are going out jogging or playing in a park, going out by yourselves, you especially need to tune in because this weapon that you're holding in your hand and you're not even aware of can save your life one day. So Thursday night, six o'clock, look forward to seeing you then. Thank you much. And now I'm going to see my little partner who's being petted and getting all the attention in the world. Hey, Bart, let's go, big guy. See you, folks.